Hey everybody, welcome back to startareengutterbusiness.com. Uh, today we're just gonna bring you a quick video on the right way to use a can of touch-up paint. Most gutter suppliers have matching paint colors to all their ring gutter accessories. And uh, when you should use touch-up paint, when you shouldn't, and how to prep the surface before you paint whatever you're painting. So I'll start off by saying we try really hard not to paint anything. Um, paint doesn't hold up as well as a factory coating on any of this aluminum. Uh, it, what, it, what it does is it sun fades over time if it's applied right. If it's not applied right, then it flakes off and chips off and cracks and uh, doesn't really leave you with a great product. But sometimes there's really no choice but to, but to paint. So we're gonna show you the right way to do that. So some colors don't have all the accessories. You can't, you can't get them. And so what we'll do is try to find a close color. How you prep that is make sure it's clean and then make sure and um, I just use a Scotch-Brite pad, either a red or green Scotch-Brite pad and scratch all of the painted surfaces with the Scotch-Brite pad. And that kind of acts as a clean to get that all the dirt and anything off of there, dust. And then it also scuffs up the base paint to make sure that this new paint adheres really well to what you're trying, the part you're trying to paint. So <clears throat> you start out by making sure this is really well shaken. Um, usually shake it for at least a minute. And then apparently it's winter here in Montana already. So <clears throat> this paint doesn't apply very well when it's cold. So if you can put it in front of a heater, just the can of paint in front of a heater, and then the parts is helpful too. If you have everything warm, helps it uh, apply a lot better. And then dry also, like if it's uh, rainy or foggy out, or just about, you can kind of tell it's starting to get ready to rain, the moisture in the air will kind of attract to the paint and it'll make the paint like foggy or misty looking. So try to avoid painting parts when it's really humid out. And then uh, once you have everything prepped, I, I made sure and got all the little nooks and crannies sanded really well, because that's where the paint will start to flake off if you don't have it sanded. So you just make sure all the little spots are sanded really well with the Scotch-Brite pad. And then once your, shake, your paint is shaken, um, I usually just do nice thin coats on here. And I usually just paint most of the stuff just by holding it with my hand. You can throw a glove on so you don't get paint on your hand, but I just do nice thin coats. Most jobs, the back doesn't really matter because you're gonna slide that behind the fascia anyways. Do one thin coat on there and then let it dry pretty good. <clears throat> and then throw another thin coat on there. So it's dried for about a minute now, I'll throw another coat on. And you just want a thin, even coat. That's what you're going for. So there she is, That's that looks pretty good. And what you're going for, you don't want any streak marks, you don't want any weird blemishes or anything. You want this to just look like a factory part. So that's the end goal. So elbows the same way. I, I try to um, sand them with the grooves of the metal. That way you kind of get down into those grooves. And you just make sure everything's nice and evenly sanded. You'll, you'll want to sand most of these parts for about, I don't know, it probably takes a minute and a half, two minutes to make sure they're sanded really well or scuffed really well. You're not really sanding. You don't need to get all the way down into the base metal, but you just want to make sure your all that paint is scratched up so the new paint adheres really well. So, and then I got the sobo all scratched up. I always make sure and shake my can some more in between any Coat, coats you put on or parts. Elbows, I just hold, put my hand in the crimped end uh, to kind of protect the inside of this. I spray towards the metal this way on all sides. That way you don't have a bunch of spray paint marks on the inside there. Say if this were, if this were the open end down on the bottom, you wouldn't want a bunch of spray paint marks on the inside there to see, it just kind of looks tacky. So same thing, this is a, already a green elbow. It's an evergreen elbow and I'm putting on, making it forest green. And so this will probably only take one good coat because the colors are so close. And I just put one good thick coat on 
And um, I try to also spray with these little, the ribs and the elbow, so that way it gets paint into all of those. So you don't end up with a bunch of the old color in those ribs. So I got these two parts painted. Hopefully this kind of helps you guys out a little bit. One thing you don't want to do is say you have a scratched downspout. You don't want to just paint a couple scratches on that downspout because what will happen is after like two to three years, the sun will fade that paint and you'll see big old stripes on the downspout of where you painted. So, I mean, this is kind of the same thing. Anything you paint is only gonna last a few years and it's gonna start fading way faster than the base metal or the base paint. And so, like I said, obviously try to avoid painting if you can. If you have to, this is the right way to do it. Thanks for watching this video again with us here. Uh, make sure if you like the video, like below, comment if you have any questions or comments and subscribe to see all of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.